AI is all the rage right now, and many people believe that it's only a matter of time until AI is able to fully design and develop custom websites. To discover how close that is to reality, in this video, I'm going to be putting the most promising AI web design builder to the test. I'm going to be doing a live, unsponsored walkthrough of the new Rayloom AI site builder, and we're going to see together by the end of this video if this tool is capable of fully designing and developing client-ready websites. What's up everyone? Welcome to the YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Bailey Canning. I'm a full stack marketing strategist working with my clients on brand strategy engagements, web design and development projects, and ongoing marketing retainers. Every week I release new videos showing you what it's like to run a modern marketing consultancy behind the scenes and discuss many of the aforementioned topics that I mentioned. If that all sounds interesting to you and you enjoyed this video, certainly subscribe so you can keep up to date with what I'm doing and feel free to introduce yourself in the comments. In a second here, I'm going to share my screen and walk you through exactly what the Rayloom AI site builder looks like. The way I'm approaching this video is a lot different than other videos I've seen here on YouTube that are covering this tool. Number one, there is no fluff here. There's no sponsorship and I'm going to be telling you exactly what I think and giving you my honest perspective. Maybe it's simply the East Coaster to me, but many of these videos I've seen in this tool just come off as very fake and fluffy, so that is fine to do here on this channel. And while I will be going through the tool and showing you how it works, this is not meant to be a full tutorial on how to use the Rayloom AI Site Builder. If you are interested in learning more about Rayloom, I've made videos in the past going over how the entire component library works, as well as its integration with the client-first system. But lastly, I will say that I do use Rayloom for every single Webflow website build I take on. However, the AI tools I'm not 100% sold on because I think only up to a certain point can you get it in a good direction to where it then makes sense for you to export everything into Figma and then start designing there. But I am open to being proven wrong. So without further ado, let's jump into the screen share. All right, so now I'm logged into the Rayloom AI Site Builder dashboard, and we're gonna go here to create a new project. So I figured it would be cool in this case to create a new business, and we're gonna design this business website from scratch. So quite honestly, if I had to start over my entire career and I could not pursue marketing, then I would choose to start an interior design firm. And fun fact, in the state of Colorado where I live, you actually don't need a license to start an interior design studio. So this would definitely be what I would look to do next. So we are going to say interior design studio. And then I have a prompt here that I use ChatGPT to create, basically just to give it an idea of what I'm going for. So we're gonna be a high-end interior design studio specializing in mid-century modern design, art deco, and Parisian chic interiors, inspired by my time when I stayed in Paris. Then I already outlined a color palette that we're gonna have, and then we already have a site map built out here. And then also just to give the AI a bit more context, as I find it can be helpful to do these sorts of things with it, I'm telling it that imagine this is a business partnership between Cary Grant and Princess Diana, two very stylish men and women in their respectful time. So we're gonna paste that in and we're gonna have a number of pages. I believe I put it to a five page website. We'll just do one to five here. And then we're gonna hit generate sitemap. So let's see what it comes up with. You can see it's already building out the homepage here of what we have. And then we're gonna have an about page, a services page, and a portfolio. This looks like it's probably going to be a project template. Then we have a design philosophy page here, okay? And then no contact or consultation page. Was that in the prompt? Let's see real quick here. Yes, that was in there. We did have a design philosophy, so that's where that comes from. But no contact page. Already I'm like, listen man, you gotta be taking directions or correctly if you wanna be an effective tool here. I do believe I can just come up here, put in contact, and then we'll say generate a contact page for this interior design studio. All right, and then we have a contact page. So as you can see, it's very simple to build this out. Now, this is the sitemap, and then we're gonna be taking progressively a look at the wireframe and then the style guide. So basically the way this works is that 
it generates the each page of the sitemap here and then we have a section which is going to be the content section and then here you can get a quick overview of what it's looking for example and then that's done for all these different pages we have the idea here is that if you wanted to you could rearrange this if you didn't like the order you could add in new sections here based on the Rayloom library component I think this is all pretty straightforward this is one of those tools here where it's helpful to look at a tutorial video but I think you'll get the most benefit out of creating the account and actually playing around with it and getting your hands dirty that being said I do have an affiliate link in the description of the video here if you would like to make your own Rayloom account like I said this video is not sponsored but I do use this for every single Webflow website build and the affiliate link will just help you support the channel if you're so inclined now here we go we have all the pages built out here so let's look at the home page You'll see it also does write the copy. Honestly, I find in many cases that the copy is good for filler copy. If I was working on a client here, this would be good just to illustrate what each section is going to look like, but it's not necessarily anywhere close, in fact, to the type of copy I would want the website to launch with. So here we have the hero section. You can see it's directly calling out the text here. Then we have an about section, talking about the different design styles here. Here's this like little fast facts section, I suppose. We're calling out what makes us unique. You can see this is helpful, testimonials, blog posts, CTA. Now all this does look a bit generic, but of course that's what the next phase is for. These are the UX wireframes. Now for example, imagine when Rayloom first launched and we had this great component library, but we didn't have the AI site builder here. Copying and pasting this all into Figma, Let's not even talk about the copy for a second. This would have just taken hours to do, probably three to five hours, I would estimate. It would have taken to put all this into Rayloom and then probably at least another five or six hours or so to just get all the copy in place. So you can see it saves so much time and I think this is the good use case of AI where it's helping you with these more like things that take a lot of time and are just like manual grunt work, so to speak. But I really don't believe yet that it's ready to replace the creative and strategic parts of the web design process. But of course we will see, I am very open to being proved wrong. All right, it's got everything here, I think, and everything is looking solid. I wanna see the portfolio. So these are the services here. Very interesting. We have a service page. We have designers, interesting. We have testimonials. We have pricing plans here, interesting. Real quick, if you're sold on the idea here of building websites with Webflow and Rayloom, but you don't wanna do this all yourself because you've got other things to handle in your business, or maybe you simply just don't have the technical expertise, regardless of the reason, definitely feel free to schedule a free consultation with myself to discuss your company's website. I will take the time to learn all about your company's goals, its current positioning, the pain points in your business. And based on everything you tell me about your company's marketing and sales situation, I will outline a website and digital marketing game plan so your company can begin to generate more leads, grow its revenue, and ultimately sign its ideal clients. That sounds good to you. There's a link in the description where you can learn more. And without further ado, let's get back to the video. So in this case, because I'm doing this for a video, it's all different, but Definitely, you're gonna to wanna to go through the sitemap and make sure you remove things because, for example, if you don't have a team, if you're a solo interior designer, you would want to remove that. So to do that, you would simply just right click and then you have a bunch of other options here. In this case, I'm gonna go delete and then we should see that reflected on the wireframe. If we go to the about page, there should be no team section anymore. Fantastic. Everything's looking solid here, but we're mostly here to see the style guide in action. So let's just go right to that and let's see. All right, so here we have the concepts. This is how you're able to create different design variations. This is concept number one. Now let's see what it came up with. You'll see it uses stock photos here. So let's see. All right, we've got like this dark maroon red, then this black. Honestly, feel free to drop a comment in terms of what you're thinking here, but I'm not liking it too much. And then this like, earthy green and then this pink out of nowhere all right this is not great i gotta say the color scheme leaves a lot to be desired the fonts i would definitely prefer a serif fonts here definitely for the headline not necessarily the body just because i think that would be much more elegant and high end the color scheme is not great you can change it section by section here but yeah i really don't think this really embodies the Cary grant's princess diana i was thinking much more like 
neutral colors. I do believe I put that in the prompt here if we look. Of warm, neutral, deep, jewel tones, soft pastels, and subtle metallics. All right, I can see, but honestly, not really. Now, the thing here is that you're able to change the colors right in here, and it does give you different variations. So this is easy to be customized. So for example, if maybe I wanted to do something like that, we should see that reflected here. You can change the headings here. Let's see, I'm gonna go with something thin like this and it looks like it was added. All right, and then I somehow changed the color even though I didn't, wasn't trying to do that. Honestly, I'm not really too concerned about the fonts here. I would always be looking to go with a more custom font anyway. So this is a serif font, we'll keep that here for now. And then we can also play around with the boldness and stuff. So I want normal. I would like it to be a little bit larger. Again, these are like the minor details you can get right in Figma, but this is being built as a tool where basically you can design everything here and then send these concepts directly to your clients, obviously with the understanding that it's going to be a very V1 type design, but that's what they have. In terms of the buttons here, they give you a lot of different styling options. I think we're gonna wanna go with zero border radius. This looks fine to me, no shadows or bubbles or things like that. We want something more minimalist, but if you wanted to explore a gradient, you could do that here as well. And then cards and images, we don't want any border radius basically. So I'm gonna say that. And then we'll go with something like this, which I think is a bit more sleek. And then yeah, we have the fonts in here. So yeah, I'm not crazy about the colors here. And then there is this like light theme as well. There is also a dark and a light theme. I think the light theme is definitely much more in line with Cary Grant and Princess Diana in this fictional scenario where to meet up. I definitely think they would be going towards that, but I think we need a brand new concept here. It looks like it's automatically generating. It's really going with these dark greens here. I really don't know why. Let's see if it goes with a new concept again. The blue I can work with here. I like the surprise me feature. So these are the different colors it's coming with now. See. In this case, especially if I already had a good idea in my head with what to do with this client, I really wouldn't wanna be fooling around in this style guide. What I would be doing is simply exporting these UX wireframes here, and then I would finalize the wireframes in Figma with the finished copy. I would probably use Claude AI for that, quite honestly, but I would also use it where we have a lot of project details in the project knowledge base. So it's not gonna be writing generic copy. It's gonna have a ton of direction and background on the company to be able to provide really good copy. And then from there, of course, I would edit it myself. And then I would probably bring it into Figma to do the UI design here. So far, I'm really not that impressed. Don't hate on me in the comments. If you're impressed, let me know what exactly you're impressed by. I'm impressed by the ideation of getting all this ready, which it's already been able to do. It is in beta, but yeah, I'm not so sure this is something that I'd be wanting to send to a client yet. So let's see what concepts we have here. So I really don't like this at all, quite honestly. Let's see if we can do like a blue and then we'll go like a light blue. Okay, I can work with that. And then maybe a gold, something like that. And then how do I get this to be? So then here I would go, all right, we're gonna go with the light face. All right, the interface is a little, it's a little confusing. I think we can say that for sure. All right, we're gonna go with this lights here. All right, now I copied it. I guess I pasted there, all right. Honestly, I'm not too crazy about this. I do want the serif fonts. Unfortunately, I didn't copy over. I'm having a hard time getting the fonts to actually apply to the design. I'm not exactly sure what it is here. You would think just by clicking on it, I would be able to find one, but all I have is the option to add it to my liked, and then I can preview it. But then once I exit out of the preview, then it goes back to the font it was. Somehow the other videos I've watched on this, they got better results. This one, I'm not too crazy about, but you can see, basically you have the options here to change the colors and then all of this. Then you also can finally export this to Figma directly. So you could export these designs into Figma. Maybe in your workflow, you think this would actually be faster than instead of exporting these UX wireframes into Figma, maybe instead you would want to style things up a bit here before doing so. I could perhaps see that for some workflows, although I'm not really sure how much time you're necessarily saving, especially if you do need to customize things. If you're working for a client, I don't think this is going to cut it. One thing that's cool here is that you can provide different pitch concepts here, and then you can send this to your client in like a private link. So if we take a look at what this looks like, first of all, you can name the concepts and then add descriptions. But if you did want to send this to your clients here, this is what it would look like. So they would be able to see the different concepts and then they would be able to preview the design like this. So I do like this, I will say. I do think it's good for getting quick client feedback, but ultimately I feel like this needs to be presented with the caveat of this is obviously like a V1 AI generated mock-up just as a starting point. So I would much prefer, and the 
way, I go about doing this for all my client site builds, is to actually design a fully mocked up homepage and present that to them and tell them, this is the design I'm recommending. I think that's much more confident. And I think clients actually wanna see, give me your best shot at how you would do this yourself before we discuss different design options. I'm slightly disappointed by this tool, quite frankly. I think it's good if you want to just maybe present some different color options perhaps, but again, the copy needs to be completely reworked anyway with either a professional copywriter or taking the time to use one of the AI LLMs, give it a lot of background on the client project to then develop copy. And obviously you're gonna need to swap out the images, which you can do directly in this tool, but yeah, I don't know. I don't really think it's super helpful. I feel like at this point, and keep in mind it is in beta, so I don't wanna to be too tough on it, but they are building it at the same time as this radical revolution to your workflow where I would argue up until this wireframe point, this has been a revolution, but this style guide, not feeling it just yet. I see the potential, but I think obviously following along still at this point in the screen share, you can see that you're gonna to need to bring this into Figma and do all your design work there, and you're certainly going to need to develop it from there. Honestly, not too big on this. I would say actually, I think at this point, a better use case of AI would be to, and let me know if there's already services like this out there, but I think something that can actually take your fully mocked up Figma wireframes and then directly import that into Webflow. I know there is the Figma to Webflow plugin. It seems to have pretty mixed reviews. It doesn't seem to be too great, but something that could do that with clean code developed exactly the way you want could shave half the time off development. So I think that would be a better use case for people to be looking looking to create AI products in the web design and development space rather than trying to do the design here, but that's just my opinion. I don't know about you, but I'm a bit disappointed there with that screen share, I'm not gonna lie. Good news, however, is that I think us web designers and developers definitely have a couple extra years than I was anticipating before going through that demo. So I understand it's just in beta, but I thought it would be a bit more advanced. Let me know what you think in the comments Overall, I can see the vision, I can see the potential, but it's just not there yet. And that Rayloom tool, I think is still the best AI website builder because I know there's several other tools out there on the market that promise to generate an entire website based on a single prompt. And from what I understand with those tools, they don't give you a lot of granular control the way Rayloom does in the site building process. So. Because of that, I'm very skeptical that any other tool is going to be better than Rayloom. The component library is fantastic, don't get me wrong, it's completely changed the way I build websites. Ultimately, this is a much broader conversation, but I see the potential for AI to dramatically impact the economy, but quite honestly, ChatGPT is like two and a half years old, and still AI does not have a killer app. It's not entirely clear to me that it is going to revolutionize the workforce and the economy the way the biggest AI proponents say it will. I'm not saying it won't, but certainly, for example, if you are a fan of The Verge, that media technology outlet, they have been saying this for a very long time where it seems that AI is a very cool piece of tech, but companies still don't exactly know what to do with it other than summarize your notifications and draft the very generic email and make some funny images. So we're still yet to see that killer AI app. I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but generally the way technology works is that it just doesn't pan out the way people think, and it almost certainly doesn't pan out in the time frame people think. And I do think the tech industry has a slight credibility problem just due to the fact that they were hyping cryptocurrency for the longest time. And while I do believe in cryptocurrency, I believe in about five of the coins, maybe not 5,000 of them. So they're coming off of that cryptocurrency bubble in 2022. And now we're in the AI hype cycle bubble and they still got a lot to prove quite frankly. So I would be very skeptical going forward. I think this demo showed that AI is just not where it is quite honestly. So yeah, I think all of us knowledge workers have a good amount more time left than we think. So Enjoy it while you can, I suppose. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you have a Webflow website build you're considering, definitely feel free to hit me up. Info in the description if you'd like to do. Otherwise, feel free to use my link to play around with Rayloom and let me know if you have a better experience using the AI site builder. Wouldn't surprise me in a year from now, I revisit this and it's way better. But at this point, I would say it's a bit more of a gimmick tool to show your colleagues or coworkers what it can do versus actually delivering for a real life client. But let me know if you disagree in the comments. Always welcome some respectful debate. I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Take it easy. Bye.